Hey there everyone, um, this time we are going to be looking at what geographers use to represent the entire world on a map. I know that we've talked maps um, in a previous video, but um, this time we're going to be looking at what are called map projections, looking at specifically how the world map um, is represented. So before we start with that, I just want to start by defining a couple of key vocab terms. Um, the first one being cartography. Okay, cartography is the study or the science of making maps. Okay, so if you are somebody who creates maps, congrats, you are a cartographer. Um, if you were to make a world map, the best case scenario is that that map is three dimensional. Um, there's no way to make a three-dimensional map, unfortunately, unless you have an actual physical globe. Um, I'm at my house right here, and I happen to have a three-dimensional globe right here. This one is actually from the 1930s, so there's a lot of outdated um, countries on it, but it's a pretty rare globe. It's hard to find globes that are that old. Um, nonetheless, when you have a three-dimensional globe, you can see the size of the countries, you can see everything to its proper dimensions. Um, when you make a map, you have to make some adjustments. So what I'm going to do first is um, I want to skip kind of through these um, couple of slides about latitude, longitude, um, figuring out coordinates and stuff like that. Um, please do read through the information, but I want to get to the map projection part um, more importantly. So I'm going to breeze through this pretty fast. but. Um, on any any map, you have what are called lines of latitude, and then you have lines of longitude. Okay, latitude lines include um, the equator, which is the line that cuts the world in half, and it goes up to 90, and it also goes down to 90. Okay, um, when we have lines of longitude, they also there also is a zero degree line, which is called the prime meridian. It runs straight down through England from the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole. And this time though, um, if you go east or west, right, you go all the way around and you get to 180 degrees. So if you have a globe, right, you're gonna start at the zero line. And if you go this way, you count all the way to 180. But if you went this way, you would also count to 180. It's just that it's east or west. So um, where they meet in the back, is going to be what is called the international date line. Okay, the international date line is 180 degrees. It's on the back of the globe, so to speak. Okay, um, anywhere that you're trying to find points on the map, those are called coordinates. So you always start with the with the point of latitude, so how far something is north or south, and then you have a line of longitude, your other coordinate, and that's going to be measured either east or west of the prime meridian. Okay, so Again, you can go through the slides, you can check this out, um, you can locate the coordinates yourself, um, but right now I'm going to keep on keeping on. So, um, we do need to talk because, as this says, you have been lied to your entire life by all the world maps that you typically see in your classrooms and in any, any other place, right? Typically, you're used to seeing the super common um, world map it looks like this, you know, you might have used Google Maps in the past. It's that that image of the world looking just like this, okay? And you might be like, yeah, okay, so what's wrong about that? Well, the thing is, right, if you were to look at Greenland, for example, that's a classic example. You take Greenland, compare it to the size of Africa, and you look at it and you're like, wow, you could barely fit one Greenland into Africa. Meanwhile, you could fit Africa probably twice into Russia on this map, all right? That's been a lie your entire life, okay? In reality, Greenland would fit 14 times inside of Africa. Greenland is not a very big country, okay? And Russia, you could actually fit probably two times into Africa. So when you look at them on this map, compared to what they are in reality, you'll notice that things are not as they seem. Things up here, are not as they seem. So why is that? Well, we have to get into um, we have to get into what is called map projections to understand this this concept. All right, because if you want to take a globe, which is round and three dimensional, and then flatten it out onto a two dimensional surface, a map, 
right? Like you would see hanging in a classroom or like you would see in a, in a textbook or something. Um, you're going to run into issues, okay? So what we have to use is a system called projection. Okay, this is a key vocab term. Make sure that you pause or write this down. A projection is the process of transferring a, the images on a globe and putting it onto a flattened map. Okay, if you're going to do that process, which you have to do when you're making a map, you're going to end up messing up one or two or three or even all four of these following things, right? You might end up distorting the shape of the things on the map. You might end up messing up the size, right? Like you saw on those maps, things get blown way up or shrunk way down. You never know. Um, the direction that things are facing could get messed up and the distance between locations can also get distorted. So if you're making a map, if you're using a projection, something has to get messed up. And that's why world maps are never accurate unless they're actually three-dimensional. So think of it like this. If you peeled an orange, right? And then you get all those orange peelings and it's laying there just as a random mess. If you tried to take that peeling and and straighten it out into a perfect rectangle, right, the shape of a map, you wouldn't be able to do it unless you stretch things, if you ripped things, cut things up, and and filled in gaps, if you filled in pieces of that orange peel, right? So think of the orange peel as, or think of the orange as being a globe, and the orange peel as being the mess that you create when you try to flatten it into a map, so to speak, okay? So the things that end up getting messed up are going to be, they're dependent on the type of map that we look at, all right? So that's why we have different names for different projections. The one that you're most often going to see, like in classroom settings, is called the Mercator Projection, all right? It was created 500 years ago. Um, it was used for navigation, but it's not great because it messes up the size of everything at the poles. It makes Antarctica look like it's an enormous continent. Um, and it looks, it makes Greenland and Canada and Russia look like they're humongous. So, um, just because I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can, um, I want to go through these pretty quickly. But um, on each of the projections that I'm about to talk about, um, I will have in red the things that get distorted or messed up. And in green is the thing that ends up staying correct or gets maintained, okay? So, at... For the Mercator projection, everything at the equator, right, that line of latitude that's a zero degree line, everything there is the correct size. But as you go further north, the lines of latitude actually start to get wider and wider to fill all this extra space, right? Because if you had a globe, it comes to basically a point at the top. So you have to fill in all that empty space by stretching and expanding things, okay? So the Mercator projection, even though you see it really often, it's garbage. <laughs> um, if you took a human face or a human head and you literally did to it what you did to the, the world map to make the Mercator projection, this is the mess, this is the nightmare that you would end up with, right? One more example, right? This is um, not an ideal look for a, a person, okay? So, um, I'll pass by that. So the next one is called the Peters projection, okay? Its goal was to keep the size accurate of everything. So this time you can see that, hey, Greenland isn't a monstrosity um, and Russia isn't either, but you'll obviously notice that it looks like you took an image and stretched it, right? Um, that's literally what that map looks like. So it distorts shape, it distorts direction. So if you tried to navigate from point A to point B on this map, it's not going to work out perfectly. Okay, then we have um, one of my favorite types. It's called the Robinson. It was designed in the 1960s. The goal was just to have a good looking map, okay? A map that just kind of looked decent. And you can see that it looks, it looks pretty nice, but everything, each of those four things was distorted, shape, size, distance, and direction. So it ends up being actually like a perfect compromise because everything was messed up in just a tiny itty bitty little bit but at the same time, you are still um, left with a map that's not perfectly accurate. So I call it the perfect compromise. It's kind of up to you what you think about that. Um, number four is called the Winkle Triple Projection. That's a funny name. Um, this one, you can see that the map 
uh, again, is not stretched all the way to the edges, right? It doesn't make a rectangle. It has still that kind of round shape to it. And you'll notice that the lines of longitude are also kind of curved, just like you would see on a globe. So it, it does keep the shapes and the sizes of things accurate or almost accurate, but the direction in this case gets messed up. So again, if you're trying to navigate on an old timey ship, you're not going to get to the correct destination um, in the right way. All right. Um, and I know my face is going to get in the way here. I'm going to park it right over here. Um, this one has a fun little name to it. It's called an azimuthal projection. Okay. Those are basically a either a top-down view, um, like you're taking it from the um, the North Pole, like you're taking a picture from the from the North Pole. Um, so it's called an azimuthal projection. It's either a top-down view or a planar view. Okay. Um, so if you were to be floating around in space and you took a picture from space, right, you're only going to see part of the world. You're not going to see the stuff that's on the back, the back of the globe, right? So this one, it distorts or messes up shape and it messes up distance. And you also can't see everything at the same time, but typically it's going to maintain proper direction. All right. This one gets a little bit creative. You'll notice this isn't your typical um, standard rectangular, rectangular map. This one is called the goods interrupted projection. All right. Um, so these are most, most of these are named after people. So I don't know who good was, but. He might have been a good guy. Horrible joke. Um, it's interrupted in that you can see kind of like the, the, the orange peel, right? How it's still connected, but it doesn't have, I mean, it has a lot of gaps and a lot of blank spaces to it. Okay. So we're not filling in the extra like blank spots on it because that would be distorting things. Okay. So it does mess up distance and it obviously messes up direction because I mean, if you were to navigate from the U S to say Europe, um, obviously you're not going to go across this blank space, but what it does is it keeps the sizes and the shapes of things pretty accurate. All right. So that's the benefit of the goods interrupted projection. And there's a lot of different map projections that look similar to that one. Um, but again, there's no perfect map. All right. There is no perfect map because it's impossible. Let me say this again. It is impossible to take a three dimensional globe and flatten it onto a two dimensional paper surface without messing up something. Right. It's just not something that you could possibly do. OK. So people have been trying and trying throughout all of history to make the perfect map. Um, there have been brilliant mathematicians and scientists who have tried to use all sorts of geometry and trigonometry and calculus or whatever they do to try to make the most mathematically perfect map that they can. But even then, it's not going to be perfect because you can't project um, a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional surface without messing up one of the four um, things. Okay. So in the Google slides, if you were to just look at the regular slides, you will also see this, um, this video here. And what that does is it, this guy shows, um, the world, um, a, a, he uses a globe, but it's actually like a big inflatable beach ball. And then he cuts the beach ball, um, like in half and then tries to flatten it out onto a perfect rectangle. And he demonstrates that it can't be done. Um, so he go he goes into exactly kind of what I've talked about. So feel free to watch that video if you want to. Um, but again, make sure that you're writing down these notes because these map projections and these other vocab terms will come up. So um, that's all I got for now. Take care.